Okay, so can we see what's going on? You guys see what's going on here? If I back out a little bit. So Gabriel, what do you think is going on here? Well, the color's trailing down to the bottom, right? Right, so why is the color trailing down? Right, I mean this 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 was this was ice this is frozen water right here, and this is this is ocean water down there. Um, because of the temperature. Oh, good guess, but no, it's not temperature. Gabriel, when you first saw this, what did you think it was? You thought that it was, it was temperature? temperature? Right, that's a natural thing, right? This is frozen, this is cold. This is, you know, room temperature, regular temperature water. And so the assumption is that there, it's cold. Now, there might be a little element of cold here, but there's something actually much more important. And if we look, we can, can see this, these, you said it looks like a, a tornado or something right yeah. in there. This sort of these streams of color are just, you know, squishing on out of here. Squishing on out. And what's doing that? Why is that doing that? So, so guesses. So, so, what were you thinking? Um, well, if it's not temperature and there's no currents or anything going on inside the water, then it might be density related. Yes, that's the answer. So, the answer is density. So, this is what's driving so much of the ocean. We tend to think about wind, which is important, and and uh, you know differential pressures and stuff like that. Temperature also is really important, but actually, this is probably the most important, um, or or at least tied for. Um, the most important force moving stuff around in the ocean. What is it? It's density. So it looks like right now as we look at this at this ice cube, right, there looks like to be this this cone of of color underneath. The dark solid part is the only is only the frozen part. What we're seeing here tagged by the tagged by the um, uh, uh, food coloring is the ocean water. Now check it out. It's not, it's not really mixing. As we're going on, if I back out a little bit, you can see the water, the overall water is, start, is starting to become slightly colored, right? So, the, so, so it's not pure clear anymore. But again, still we have this, this huge color tornado right here. And it's, it's very similar to a tornado, actually, very similar to a, a vortex. But instead of spinning air or, or spinning water, per se, making the vortex, what's going on here is um, density. So this ice I made by, and you made, by taking it in your um, freezer and freezing it. And if we look at this ice, if I pull this ice out for a second and we look at it, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of uh, 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 opaqueness to it, right? We can't see, it's not, it's not clear like a, like a thing of glass, it's, it's opaque. Why is it opaque? It's opaque because there's a gazillion million little air bubbles. It's a gazillion million little air bubbles in here. Right, so that me and, and so that that's from impurities and various things. But also, what it me well, what's also going on is it has to do with the nature of water, the nature of ice, and how that freezes. And so, what's happened here is as we're making here, let's see. as we're making this, we have a bunch of water, right, that I poured into the container. Now, fr fresh water freezes um, more quickly than. Salt water. Salt water has a lower freezing point than fresh water. So what's happening inside this guy, as, as we're making it, as, as this ice is in this little container and freezing in the freezer, um, what's happening is as it's getting colder, the water is squeezing out the impurities. It's squishing out the salt, the non-pure water stuff. And the, the, the water is making an ice crystal, an ice lattice. So it's squishing out the, the, the salt water. And what it's in effect making is tons of little pockets of super briny water. So tons of little micro pockets of super salty water, not just salt water, but salty, salty, salty salt water. And so as it's freezing, what's happening is as that water, those little crystals of water start to melt and go into the water column, right? Um, where as, as that's happening, we also every, every once in a while, some, some sheath comes off, some sheath comes off, some sheath comes off, and all of a sudden, whoa, we open up a pocket, a pocket of that hyper saline, that brine water. So all of a sudden, that brine water is super salty. It's much more dense than the surrounding water, and so that stuff sinks, whew, 
and it just so happens it's it's concentrated more of the dye as well and so as it as it streams down that's why we saw those funnels screw you know going down because all that dense all that m more saltier water is sinking down to the bottom and the rest of this water is regular salinity temp uh, regular salinity and so right now even though it might be hard to see we can still see streams happening streams are pouring out of this so this salinity differential this density and stuff mixed with the water creates di distinct bodies of water distinct masses distinct chunks of water and they behave differently the more dense it is the heavier it is the more it'll tend to sink the less stuff that's in there the more close to pure water pure h2o will tend to be lighter and tend to float and so um, these things mix around all the time and they create these very clear discrete chunks of ocean water and so right here we're seeing this pour down now we have this closed container and if we look close um, if i lift this up maybe i don't know if it's going to work you may be able to see a darker green layer at the bottom where that dense most stuff is i'm picking it up so it's starting to get disturbed but maybe you can see that maybe you can't but that's what's going on and so so just by adding no motion by adding i wasn't stirring the water i wasn't splashing or anything like that just dropped it in and you saw how much right it was like a rocket ship to the bottom and so that that gradient that that differential in density drove a whole bunch of movement in this thing and indeed look what's happened now now this whole thing is 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 getting light green the whole water mass is mixed so just that little bit the dropping of that of that um surface ice in there just that water squoosh squoosh down boom hit the bottom bounce back up and that's going on all across the world's oceans all the time rain on the surface rivers dumping in creating these gradients and then that in turn induces movement. When we add wind and, and other uh, tidal forces and other things on there, it gets even more complicated. But the fact is the ocean is a chunk. We, we think of the ocean as this big contiguous one thing, the ocean, the Pacific, the Atlantic or something. It's really one giant ocean. It's really one world ocean. And what creates this huge structure is all this cool stuff, most of which is associated with the physical properties of water. So water makes our planet a magic planet. Water makes our, our planet able to support the life, the diversity of life and the types of life that we have. In fact, the only place that we know of in the galaxy that has abundant frozen, abundant solid, abundant uh, gaseous water is the earth and so we're in this goldilocks place in terms of our distance from the sun and in terms of this wonderful substance called h2o or water that's what makes this planet awesome that's what makes the ocean awesome and that's what structures almost everything we um, have come to learn and know and see and experience in the world's oceans